All right, uh, this is a, a video in response to a question from a YouTube comment, but it's a question that's come up in other contexts before, and it's kind of a some not not an uncommon scenario. Basically, the question is, or the the scenario is that the person wants to create a flow that will run, uh, basically send reminders or send emails on specific milestones. In this case, it's it's for new hires in an organization. And for the first six months that that person, after that person's start date, they want to send an email to the user's manager to have them fill out a performance evaluation of some kind. Uh, so to replicate that, I've set up a very simple list here in SharePoint called new hires. Simply have a title column, which is the person's name. And then uh, the two columns that we need to make this process work are a person column. Uh, in this case, I called it user, which has the user record of that particular hire, and then a date column, which is hire date. Now, it is important that this actually be a date column, not just text column containing 10, 28, 22. So be sure that you make it as a date column um, in SharePoint. And I've simply called that hire date. Uh, so the internal name will be the same name, but without that space in between, which is important because we'll need to know that later. Now, in terms of the flow that we're going to set up, this will be a, uh, what I did is I already built this out. I've tested it. So I'm going to just kind of walk you through how it's built and explain along the way some of the things that you need to keep in mind and some of the expressions that I use, although I'll try to include those all in the, um, description of the video but uh, if we go in if I edit this flow we can see exactly how it's set up so first off it is using the recurrence trigger which is normal for a scheduled flow it's going to run every day at seven o'clock uh, if I edit this we'll see that I've set it to be my local time zone which is eastern US and set it to start at 7 a.m. now this could be any time of day you want it's entirely up to you uh, but that's just the trigger. Now, kind of the, the heart of this is this variable, this uh, array variable that I created, which is going to contain information for those milestones. So basically we've got, uh, this is an array of objects. So each object in the array has a title value, in this case, six month, and a date value, which I'm using this, um, not terribly complicated expression, but I'm basically using the subtract from time expression, the convert from UTC expression, and the UTC now expression in combination to get the date that is six months before the current date. And again, I'll include the, the actual expression that you need in the description, but just to read through it, it's essentially saying from starting from the middle, the UTC now recurrence the current time. I want to convert that into my local time just to be sure to account for when the flow runs. Even though the column is only storing a date, we still want to make sure that we're getting the current date um, in the correct time zone. So basically we're saying return convert UTC now to current uh, Eastern Standard Time. Return that in four digit year, two digit month, two digit day and then subtract six months from that and return that in the form of four digit year, two digit month, two digit day. Now this one is, you know, obviously subtracting six months. For five month, we are subtracting five and so on and so forth. I won't go through all of them, but you get the idea. Uh, we've got six entries here. So six, five, four, three, two, one. All right, so that's our variable. That's essentially the, the the, the milestones, the dates that we're going to be looking for. That's just basically spitting out for us a list of those dates with a label for each one indicating how far back that time, that uh, particular milestone is. Now we're going to use a get items action uh, from the SharePoint connector. So because we want to get items from our human resources site from that new hires list. Now, because we don't want to get everything from the list, we, we want to 
be efficient about this. So that list could have hundreds, thousands of, of entries over time. We just want to get those that we actually need to do something with, which would be those where that higher date is greater than or equal to six months from today. Now we're getting in this variable, we're establishing that six month, that's kind of the maximum or the, the oldest timestamp that we want to get. So what we're going to do is basically say where a higher date, and again, this is the internal name of that column, um, is greater than or equal to, and one of the things that I always bites me with these OData expressions, be sure you put these single quotes around the value in here. But basically this expression is saying from var dates, return the first item, which is item number zero, and return the date property from that because it's an array of objects. Objects have properties. We want the date property from the first element or item in that array, um, which will be that six month time uh, timestamp. Uh, so that's it. So this is gonna return all those items that are where basically all the ones we need to work with. Next, uh, we need to do a little looping. And we're actually gonna use two loops. We're gonna use a, a, an outer loop, which is gonna cycle through those list of dates because that's kind of our primary driver is the dates. We wanna say for every date, give me the people who have that as a start date. So again, who started six months ago? Who started five months ago? Who started four months ago, etc. Uh, and I have a couple extra steps in here. I just like throwing these in for more for diagno diagnostic troubleshooting purposes as in building out flows. I might remove them later if I need to, but this is just a compose action where I'm returning the date. Now you will notice that this changed it to this, the, the icon here changes to something that looks like the one of the time and date actions. Uh, that's just something Power Automate does. Don't read too much into it, but it's just an expression returning the item, the current item's date property. Uh, next, I am going to use a filter array action because this get items is outputting an array of items. Uh, I want to filter that array to find those items where the higher date is equal to the current date being processed. So this is just looking at the outputs of this compose action. Uh, I could just as easily put the expression here into here and not have the compose action, but again, that's the doing it piecemeal kind of helps you learn how to do these things a little bit better. Uh, and then after that filter array, I have another compose action that I've renamed to count results. And basically this is just looking at the length of whatever's returned by that filter. So Again, not necessary for the process, but good to know for as you're building it and troubleshooting it to ensure that you're getting the right result. So if there are five people hired on a particular day, this count should be five uh, when that date is being processed. Uh, lastly here, we have another apply to each loop. Now this is going to apply to each of those new hires. And I should have renamed this. I, let, me, let me fix that now. Let me just apply it to each new hire. Although it's six months, maybe they're not so new. Uh, but basically this is saying for each um, item coming out of that filter array. So for the every item from the fil that's being filtered or yes, you know what I mean. The things coming out of that filter array action uh, for that item, I want to get the manager. Now I need to do another expression here just because uh, like the dynamic content is not going to let me pick the uh, the user. Well, no, it, it that kind of bit me. I don't want to do that. So let me remove that and remove that. Yeah, because the array is, let's do this again. So let me delete this and delete this. So what I need to do is add an action in here and we'll add the get manager action, which again will return the manager of the 
person whose email you feed in here. So what I need to feed in here is the current item. So item question mark user because it's the user column. And then from that user column, because user columns are person columns are complex columns, I need to use the email or call the email property of that. So basically for the current items, the user column in the current item return the email address and that will get me the manager of that person. And then within here, I need to get that I want to send the email to that manager. So the output of the get manager mail, that's what I need. Now within the subject here, I'm simply saying, please complete. And this is the title of that outer. So that apply to each date loop, the item, the current item that's being processed, return the title of this. So this will be that five month, six month, four month, etc. cetera. Uh, evaluation for, and again, I'm using a similar uh, expression here where I'm saying the items from apply to each give me the user but give me this time the display name not the email address because display name is just another property of that person column and for simplicity the body of my email is simply link to evaluation form obviously you would put the actual link to the form in here or instructions whatever it might be but just to keep it simple I left it as some text so if I click save And we exit out of here and we run this. It should, even though I did change something there, it should work. We'll just run that. It succeeded. And if I jump over to Robert's mailbox, we'll see there is my email to complete the six month evaluation for Andrew Carter. And if we look over at Andrew Carter started in October on the 28th. Today is uh, April 28th, so that is six months. Uh, likewise, we have a four month for Peter and a one month for Louis. So there you go. That's basically how it works. It's not the simplest thing in the world to do, uh, but by using a variable of the date milestones uh, and then using the basically using that as the, the, the basis for returning the items that we need, all of the items in one shot, and then filtering what data was returned in, in that uh, get items action. For each of the dates, we can then process each one individually. Um, so again, not super simple, but not overly complex. Uh, I will include the relevant uh, expressions in the description of this video. So if you have any questions, problems, etc., please let me know.